The Christmas season is a season of gift giving. Epiphany is a time when we remember the Magi giving gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Some of the gifts that we often give these days are gift cards. We give gift cards because we can choose to go to a store or go online and buy an individual product for each person and think the whole thing through, or we can simply hit a button and buy a few gift cards for somebody. Now, gift cards can be wonderful to receive because you can do whatever you want with them. Gift cards can be nice to give because it's a lot easier. Some gift cards we can use for something we really need, and oftentimes we use gift cards for something that it's nice to have. I wonder what gift cards Jesus would receive if he were to get gift cards. <laughs> that might sound really silly. Of course, Jesus isn't going to receive gift cards. But what gift does Jesus want to receive? You know, if we gave him gift cards, he'd probably just give them away to somebody anyway. What does Jesus want us to give away? What gift does Jesus want to receive from us? We know there's an answer we hear all the time. Jesus wants to receive yourself. He wants to receive us. Okay, that's wonderful. It's a good answer. Jesus wants me to give him myself. But let's look at that a little deeper. What does that mean? What does it mean to give myself to the Lord? I can say it just in general big terms. I can stop and say, in my life, for me, if I give the gift of myself to the Lord, what does that mean? You know, Jesus really doesn't need our gifts. They're just nice to have. And in reality, any gift that we give to the Lord really helps us more than it helps God. Maybe we give the gift of our time. What does that mean? Or maybe we pay attention to somebody who might need somebody to walk with them in one way or another. Or maybe the gift of our time means I make sure that I make time for God every day, that I spend time with him every day. Because when I make time for the Lord, that's a gift that he likes. That's the gift that he wants to receive. And that's a gift that helps the giver. You know, it's nice giving gifts whether they're gift cards or something else. It feels good to give gifts. When it comes to the Lord, it feels good to give gifts to him. And the gift of our time is a wonderful gift that we can give. The gift of our talents. Maybe we're sitting here, either at home or here in church, thinking to ourselves, I don't have any talents. We all have talents. Some people have talents that everybody can see. Most of us have talents that most people don't see. Maybe one of our talents is simply trusting in the Lord. When we get angry, when we get upset, when we get frustrated, we still trust in the Lord. Maybe we don't look at that as a talent. But maybe that's a gift we can give to God. Lord, I give you the gift of my patience and my trust. Our treasure, we've all been given different treasure. But whatever the treasure is we've been given, we just ask God for the gift to use that treasure to build up his kingdom in whatever way he's asking us to do. Perhaps simply how I choose to live my life is the gift I give to Jesus. What I choose to look at, what I choose to listen to, where I choose to go, how I choose to speak, what if each day the gift we gave to the Lord was just the day? Lord, I give you my day today and everything that's going to happen today. He doesn't need that gift, but it's, like, it's nice to have. He'd love to have it. The first reading spoke about light. Your light has come. Thick clouds cover the peoples, but your light has come. Maybe the greatest gift we can give to the Lord is to allow his light to come inside of us and to follow his light, and to look up and see his light, even on those cloudy days when we can't see any light. What a great gift that is. 
On this epiphany, we celebrate the magi, seeing a star, seeing a light, and following that star. And they were led to Jesus. What a great gift it is if we can give to the Lord just paying attention to his light and following it. The psalm said, Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Wouldn't that be wonderful if every nation on earth adored the Lord? Now, we're not a nation. We can't adore the Lord as a nation, but we can adore the Lord in our own lives, in our own hearts. And the way we adore the Lord is by every day saying, Lord, in all my words and all my actions today, may I adore you. And perhaps if each of us adore the Lord in our own way each day, then that grows and it grows. The second reading said that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body. The Jews expected the Messiah to come just for them. But Jesus came for every one of us. He came into our world for every one of us. He suffered and died for every one of us. He rose from the dead for every one of us, not just for the person sitting next to us. And the greatest gift we can give to him is to recognize that and then to truly allow him to be a part of our lives. And then the gospel. The Magi came, came. They saw the star. They followed the star. And they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What gift will we give to the Lord today and then tomorrow and then the next day? Gift cards can be nice. They're easy. We can use them for things we need or just things that's nice to have. We're not going to give Jesus gift cards. But what we can give him is our very self. And how do we do that? By giving him our time, our talents, our treasures. By how we choose to live our land. What we choose to look at, where we choose to go. May we take the chance today. May we truly, in a very deep way, in a very deep way, Give the gift of our very self to the Lord.